This is an example of ambrosia artwork that we create. For me, the ambrosias are a lot like living cubism because when you walk past it, like if you stand here and actually move from left to right, Oh, and wow. just kind of just from here, like kind of just keep track of your own face. You just see different parts of your, your visage wow. and the, your it's face. It's like here and here, it's really cool. Yeah, it's optically disorienting. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really something that stimulates the imagination. Yeah. And that's been one of the hallmark of our work in Silicon Valley, where our work first took off. I am really a, a, a citizen of the world, truly multicultural, biracial, always very passionate about building bridges with the artwork that I create. I started in a Japanese ink painting when I was just, you know, four years old. Um, and this idea of, of negative space has played a big role, that kind of playground for the viewer's imagination that sits between the artwork and the viewer. Um, but another formative influence would be Silicon Valley, all of the disruptive energy and ideas and people that are changing the way that the world is being built um, every day. And, I would say a third influence would really be uh, the Renaissance and the great thinkers and creators there, people like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, people who were not only artists as we think of them today, but the leading technologists of their time and who were also creating for immortality. Before, we, you know, artists maybe 3,000 years ago would say, how will this artwork impact somebody in 1,000 years? Now, where we sit in the 21st century, we have to say, how will the artwork that we are creating affect not only biological intelligence, but artificial intelligence as well, mm. which is something really mind-mending and something that yeah. keeps me up at night. It's so interesting hearing you talk about it from such like a technological standpoint. Mm. You hear like the singularity and creating for immortality. These are, it almost feels like these are tech concepts and it's so interesting to be sitting here um, through the lens of art looking at those. Well, creating for immortality has been something that the greatest artists have been contemplating all throughout history. Yeah. And right now, as we're at the dawn of the metaverse and uh, this intersection of, of blockchain technology and virtual reality and MR, VR, AR, um, it's all going to be built by art and artists. And yeah. that's tremendously exciting. How will art disrupt the metaverse? Art is the metaverse. In what capacity? Well, it's this uh, confluence of visual, technical, engineering, psychological, uh, the, the historical, um, the, you know, all of the different components. Essentially, um, we are building worlds atom by atom, pixel by pixel. We're right. building realities. And so uh, we are really fulfilling the dream that artists have had since the dawn of human creativity when we had the cave paintings of Lascaux. Mm -hmm. And all we had as materials was cave walls or fast forwarding to the Renaissance and uh, we have Michelangelo pushing fresco painting to its very edge and submersing us in the uh, creation of man. Now we have so many more and more and more and more tools. What are we going to do with those tools as artists? And will we live up to um, uh, the promise of the technology and really push it in the right direction? Which is a huge question right now because we sit at the dawn of a new era of the internet and there's obviously this utopian vision and there's the dystopian vision and hopefully we'll lean towards this one. But if we look at the last era of the internet, um, a lot of things went wrong. I've thought about that a lot, that we did miss the boat in so many ways with web 1.0, with web 2.0, with the way that misogyny was baked into the DNA of the internet right from the get-go. And if you look at the NFT space, for people like me that have been evangelists of not only digital art, but technological art for, for over two decades, it's tremendously exciting to see how NFT solves these problems of authenticity and ownership and so on and so forth. But we also have to go into this era clear-eyed and know that we are facing a lot of problems. Uh, you know, the biggest, most significant piece in this space is the everydays that Beeple created. And uh, you spoke with Beeple. That piece went on the auction blocks for a whopping $69 million. It was kind of the shot heard around the world. Uh, it did draw mainstream media attention. It did shake up the traditional art world and it did help kick off an NFT revolution. But few paused to notice and even fewer wanted to listen to the fact that embedded inside of that piece were deeply uh, racist and misogynistic 
imagery from things about black dildos to hypersexualized Asian women, lots of female genitalia, so on and so forth. So much of your work is um, aimed at countering racism and sexism. Obviously, it's super personal to you. Can you describe anything that's happened to you specifically that's helped shape your view on this? I just experienced early on in my career a tremendous amount of sexual harassment and um, that paired with dismissive behavior uh, from people who are quite influential in, in art and, and media world. And that was so suffused within the fabric of the traditional art establishment uh, that I knew for sure that I had to break away, step out and create my own uh, standalone business and really kind of build outside of the system. It just wasn't even an option to work within that level of, of toxicity. Do you believe this era of NFTs in the metaverse, um, will this form into something that's very tangible? So I think it's very similar to the dawn of Web 1.0 when people were like, what is this thing called the internet and why in the heck would we use it? What will we use it for? Well, people who are early adopters like myself were saying, well, you'll use it for commerce, you'll use it for play, you'll use it for work and for, for governance. And the same thing, you know, for entertainment, the same thing is true of NFTs. Anything that you can possibly think of uh, is something that you could wrap NFT technology around and, and leverage. And also, it's really only um, going to go as far as, as the imagination that we bring to it. So the kinds of things that we can do with smart contracts and all sorts of interesting conceptual things that, that can be leveraged from an artistic standpoint, but also in the do domains of entertainment, politics, governance, uh, work, play, commerce, are the, the surface is just to be scratched right now. What is not guaranteed, though, is um, what direction we're going to go in. Are we, are we going to build these spaces to be uh, truly diverse and inclusive and um, with a lot of representation from people from all walks of life and, and also with uh, positive messages embedded in them that we really want to pass down to future generations and that we want to look back at our own era and be proud of? Or um, will it become kind of a, a junkyard in some places. How do we get more people in? I mean, as someone who's um, speaking about this and who's inside this world before a lot of other people, right? How do we level the playing field? It's definitely not easy because um, there's there's a lot of very closed male circles. There's a lot of uh, crypto is filled with a lot of secret groups. It's all about sure. being in this messenger group, this telegram group, this uh, secret group that's in on this thing that's gonna share that information mm -hmm. and knowledge. And oftentimes those really aren't open to women. Uh, I try to do it with the work that I'm building. And I, I try to answer that question with a, a piece like, will your heart pass the test? Will your heart pass the test was your latest project. What was the thinking behind it? So. When you look at how racism and sexism are right now starting to get baked into the DNA of Web3, that's very disconcerting to me. And I didn't want to just sit back. I said, you know, we have to do something. What are we going to do about it? And, and describe, and this is a piece of digital art. This is a piece of digital art. And the uh, name is Will Your Heart Pass the Test? The inspiration is twofold. First part for the subject matter, comes actually from ancient Egypt. They had uh, a, a mythology around this idea of when a person goes to the afterlife, they will pass through many different tests and obstacles. The final one will be that one's heart will be weighed against a feather, and that will be the summation of all that you did in your life. And if your heart is uh, lighter than a feather, then you will pass on to the afterlife. If it's heavier than a the feather, there's a monster waiting to devour your heart and send you into oblivion. <laughs> so it's really the oldest written moral code in history, and I, I always thought that this was an extraordinary idea, so I wanted to bring it to life in blockchain technology. What did you want people to take away from this? Well, the, uh, the second part of the inspiration for the, the work is the social mission aspect, as I said, and kind of years for me being both a witness and also an 
active participant in different social activism and technology movements and um, really believing that art is an incredibly powerful social force in our world and we need to tap into it and leverage it as we face these very intractable problems. And it's a question, you know, will your heart pass the test? If I look at where we are in our global society today with, um, you know, African American people being murdered on the streets by police, we have Asian American elderly people just being killed, being burned, being stabbed just for being the wrong race, being, looking different. I know that uh, collectively we aren't passing the test, uh, but how do we take this moment to examine where we are, what we're doing, and, all, and, and get inspiration and, and energy and resilience to, to go forward and make real change through art and technology merged. You just gave birth to a little boy. Yes, yes. You want your son to grow up in a kinder world. Yeah, what makes this personal is looking down at my newborn child and thinking that everything that we do has to be done for the next generation. Our time on this planet is gonna be so brief. And so what are we building that is going to be for immortality? I mean, I think art really is like a time capsule that we compress our best ideas, values, emotions, and we send it far out into the future and it lasts beyond us uh, if it's of substance, if it's of value, and it can be a gift to the future. Um, what messages are we sending out there? It's going to be for the generations that are unfolding before us.